Welcome back. Here we are. We find ourselves on the edge of a creek bank again. We ain't gonna take no trip today, though. I'm gonna just call, talk to you for a minute. I got caught up in this hike and my gardening channel suffering. I ain't gonna lie. I've been gardening, just not recording video. And both my sons moved back to town. So I've been doing some hiking. Anyhow, kind of a pretense. And this video is gonna go out to everybody as with the sequence of videos that will follow this. But this is aimed toward this conversation, my local people. I've been getting a lot of feedback from them videos and I'm, I'm loving that, a lot of advice and I appreciate every bit of that and I'm, I'm, I'm researching it and going on top of what I'm already doing. You're fixing to see a series of videos come up. You see all these places about beautiful rivers. Me and my wife has traveled a lot even before I started doing these YouTube videos. A lot of videos that we did before we started this channel. It was on the Lousy Florida Gardener channel. Sorry if I'm a little lucky and Darty just got off work. Had a couple of them cold bears. The rivers that you see other places like the Swanee and the St. John, those are beautiful rivers. Don't don't take me a bite, but right here in Taylor County, if you're from Perry, you know this. We have a different kind of beautiful river. We have a lot of tributaries and swamps and creeks and different things that run through our woods. So they're their own kind of unique beauty. So we're fixing to start taking some trips down those areas and we're gonna do a little bit of history. There's prehistoric mastodons, as most of you know. I mean, they're in the museum. There's been articles on them, that's no secret. Uh, we're not hunting dinosaurs. We're just walking and looking and seeing what we There's see. been settlements and civilization there since the Spanish times. Thomas Mill Run, Thomas Mill Island on the other side, of, and you know, between the Finn Holloway and different places. We know the Spanish were here. Everybody loves to see that history as long as it don't involve them. And that's where we're headed next. Taylor County, if you're from Perry or any of these areas, you know that during the late 70s up through the 80s, there were a lot of drug busts in Taylor County from smugglers, big time smugglers. So that's what we're gonna dive into. A lot of people like history in a local town until you start talking about their kinfolk and people they know. So most people don't really get into that. Most type people from Taylor County, you've heard the term of Operation Sunburst or the Sandy Creek Murders or the Steenhatchee Seven. Or, and most of you never really dove into the outside of that because the media was focused on the local boys that they tried to make look like they were hardened criminals. When in reality, most of them was just family top men and young men that was trying to make a living, trying to get ahead and had an opportunity to make a bunch of cash by not doing really anything but offloading some drugs or hauling some drugs. So most local people that I've heard that's ever really tried to dive into that, when they start seeing certain names, they went to back it up. I understand. I know most of them. I do saw work for them. And there's children who are my age. Uh, but we about to take a little trip down that smuggling lane, investigate the past and the history. Not because we want to persecute local people, but because we want to connect it to the failures of the DEA and the United States justice system and to the wealthier class and the Colombian drug lords who pretty much fought their way out of most of it compared to the local people. That's what we're going to talk about. See, most people never did enough research to understand most of the drugs that come in our area during the marijuana days and during the cocaine days. Coming from Medellin, Colombia. Medellin cartel. If you do enough research, you'll also find out that most of these people were directly connected, the head honchos, to the Pablo Escobar regime. So to really understand how it became possible all over Florida, it just wasn't just Taylor County, there was other areas, the Everglades, different places. Study Pablo Escobar, you'll figure out that he was a master genius in mind, even though he was a criminal. He formed the cartel the first major cartel in Colombia that was organized. Take for instance, if you follow it through, he used the money that was made to be shipped in to the United States on the marijuana to refine and distribute the Colombian cocaine era. That's what really came in after that. So you really need to understand that. When he took over, 
he restructured. They cut out a lot of the people. He went to extremes. He would buy you off if you wouldn't be buy, bought off. He'd kill you off. If you're from America, you know they went into federal courtrooms in Mexico and just killed them all. You know, they'd kill you, your youngins, everybody ever knew you or your youngin. By next year, y'all wouldn't even be a memory. And so he really restructured the way drugs were distributed throughout the world. And we hear the most about the cocaine, but his first entrepreneurship that he had at disposal was the marijuana trade, which led directly to Taylor County's coastline along with other coastlines. Places like the Steenhatchee River, the Rocky Creek, the Oscilla, there were other places where it was coming in. What made the Taylor County bunch during the Oscilla part was that they were seeking lawyer advice before they'd ever commit the crime on how to do it best and how to invest the money. They had investors, they had lawyers. It was really an organized crime. If you look it up, it's, I mean, it's right there. So we're going to talk about those when we get over on the Oscilla. And I'm only going to do this because I know people that's from around here are going to ask about that. So I'm going to go ahead and get it out on each of these places as we go to each place to begin our route. Uh, they involved the movement of motorhomes, sophisticated surveillance equipment. I mean, these people could actually talk to the ship in Colombia and the different people that were within the Escobar Foundation and follow this ship on radio all the way till it made port just outside the Oceola River. I mean, they were hauling this in planes, shrimp trawlers, motorhomes, on the days when shipments were coming in, they had people posted in tree stands along roads. They had cops bought off, had escorts. I mean, it's all in the court papers. The Steenhatchee Seven, they had most of their neighbors and all paid off. You study the, the effect on the Everglades. So that, that was what really made that possible. And you need to understand that to understand what made it possible. These guys wasn't just your average homegrown growers. These men were unloading off of ships that was coming from a place that would load. These people was loading tonnage on ships in Colombia. So the real major effect was is that most of the local people who were the, the foot people that were workers are the ones that really got the most devastated. Most of the other names, they, they really kind of bought their way out of it, didn't serve the maximum sentences that they were given, traded deals, and ended up, most of them kept their cash the higher up. You know, if you do your research and you try to get unfocused off of just the local people, You'll find out that part of the Medellin Cartel, Clyde Walton Bill Cobb, who we know is the organizer of the Alcilla event due to the court records. He also was involved in numerous other deals that was proven in the court of law. He was a direct link to Pablo Escobar, admitted in his own interview. He, he just, on his own, he even talks about going on repeated, numerous trips to Colombia. He talks about that repeatedly, arranging deals and the different things that went on. And his brother-in-law, Dan Abbey, he was an accountant and an advisor to Bill Cobb. Jose Luis Acosta, Rene Benitez. Now this gentleman was not only a smuggler for the cartels, he went on to be arrested numerous times over the next few years and barter his way to a lesser sentence out of most of them with money and different things. And also was held one time for shooting two DEA agents. Now all these people were connected to the people in Perry involved in the operations. Over around the Steenhatchee you had such names as Steve Lamb. Now he's, everybody should know him. He wrote a book, I believe it's called Steenhatchee 7 or something like that, about the road to nowhere. And then you go on to like your, your Floyd Capo, which was, they called him Bubba. Walter Steinhorst, he was a quadruple murderer. Him and David Goodwin, was convicted in the Sandy Creek murders. Most of you may have heard of that. That's why we get the name in Perry of the Oscilla Sinks. Some people call it Dead Band Sinks. Some people call it Murder Sinks on the Oscilla River from a drug deal that went bad over in Panama City. Bobby Joe Vines, a Tallahassee business. Charlie Everett Hughes, who was also involved in the murders over in, he was one of the men that went with Steinhorst to the Sinks where the murders happened at. Ray Stansel Jr. Now this was a colorful character. He decided he wasn't going to prison. He took off. He was called in as missing. The dumb men rode off his death and he was ID'd in a wreck in Australia. Years later, never served in prison. He took his money and left. 
and Antonio Biscara. Now this was a colorful pilot. He was a smuggler directly for Escobar's organization. He was also a pilot during the Bay of Pigs. He was involved with America trying to overthrow Fidel Castro. He crashed in, in Cuban territory and was actually conversated by Castro's brother and joined the resistance to save his own life and actually has an airplane that he flew in the war that occupies a spot in Cuba's Museum of the Revolution. Now to all my local Taylor County people, here's what I want to reassure you. We're not fixing to start naming your relatives. Uh, they weren't really criminals in the marijuana trade. I mean, these people had an opportunity to make some quick bucks by just performing labor. Some of them went a step further. There are two names from Taylor County that I will name in the video when we come to that point. We're going to do one video on each place so that we can move on down the river and talk about the Indians and the settlers. But the rest of you ain't got to worry. We're going to name some names from out of town. We're going to name some of the big whalers. We're going to talk about some of the events, some of the dates. So I'm not here to bash no local people. You can believe that. But if you were involved in that and a lot of you still alive and you'd like to tell your story, even remain anonymous. I'd definitely be interested in that. But other than that, you ain't got to worry about your kinfolk unless your kinfolk's from Columbia or Fort Lauderdale or Miami or New York. We're not going to name them with the exception of two. And the only reason with them two is their family and one of them married into the Colombian connections. So that is what it is. So anyhow, I invite you to let's take a little trip with me and we're going to we're going to get down the all and that's just going to be one series of video. And we're going to get down to Steen Hatchie, and that's just going to be one series. And after that, we're going to be hunting settlements again. But I know there's going to be a lot of questions asked on that. So I want to go ahead and get that on out there right off the bat. So we're going to take a few trips right through a smuggler's paradise right here in Taylor County, Florida. Appreciate y'all joining me. Get ready. We're about to take off here shortly. <laughs> 